Our speaker today is AK. He has been in digital marketing for since the early 2000s and is the co-founder and CEO at Le Chauffa Digital Marketing. I'm sorry if I don't pronounce that well. And then uh, we have over 30 people working on, they are specialized in type, type 3, CMS and multi marketing automation. Um, is both, both are also open source. So AK has been a, has been a forefront of a market, uh, uh, forefront of open source, and uh, he has also been spending the time contributing, which is also the team lead for Mautic community, and he's also the one who hosts um, the Mautic book that's titled the Mautic cast. All right, thank you so much, AK, for coming. We appreciate you. Okay, please go on with the um, please go on with the presentation now. Thank you very much, Toby. Thanks for having me, and thanks for a nice introduction. Uh, let me share my screen. And let's jump right into the topic. Yeah, welcome everybody. Thanks for being here today on this Saturday. Um, Toby asked me to come up with a interesting topic and there's one that has been on the top of my head for quite a while, um, but it is not, not a really common one. And that is about anonymous visitors, getting the most out of anonymous visitors. So I called it more conversions. Before we go there, real quick uh, about myself is pretty much what Toby already told you. Um, first thing to mention, maybe I'm, I'm located in Hanover, Germany. I'd love to be in Lagos. Maybe I can one day, but I'm not. And uh, yeah, as, as Toby already mentioned too, uh, I've been involved with open source um, for, for decades. And I encourage everyone to do the same because it's really rewarding. It, it's creating fantastic products and it's also fun to do that, which is an important motivation. Yeah, everything else has been said, I think. Um, now let's start with, with the top level view. What are we talking about here? I guess all of you are familiar with the concept of a marketing funnel. In fact, there are multiple funnel models depending on what your audience is, whether it's B2C, what the nature, nature of your product is, whether it's uh, a long buying cycle or a really short one. But here's a typical one that is uh, talking about attract, convert, close the deal and delight the existing customer. So that would be one concept. And let me now try to transfer that into what Mordic can do for us. Um, and we start with attracting visitors to the website. Uh, example would be being present in Google through SEO or SEA or doing social media or influencer marketing or whatever. All of those are not within reach for Mordic, so we're not part of that. There are tiny little things like retargeting where we can do things. But other than that, attracting is out of scope for Mordic. What we can do really well is nurturing existing known leads or existing customers even. So closing the deal by doing uh, drip campaigns, stuff like that. I hope all of you have heard of that and, and are happily using those concepts. So stay in touch with an existing customer through email, through text messages, through postcards even. That's the core business of Mordic. It's, it's uh, well, email automation plus plus more. Um, that's that's where we all come from, or where many come from. And the same is true for existing customers, where um, you can try to or make sure to make them happy after they purchase, uh, to make sure they do recommendations. They they do not regret what they bought. They may maybe upsell, cross sell or maybe pay, buy services after two years and all that to stay in touch with existing customers also really easy because we have their contact data. Now, the, the challenging part though is what can we do with anonymous visitors? Those who come to the website but do not yet um, give us their contact data. So we don't know who they are. We at best know where they are located or see a fraction of the IP address. And that's it. Um, is there anything that Mordic can do 
for us. Um, the goal is, of course, to convert those anonymous visitors into known contacts, into actual leads or even into customers. Once again, different scenarios. If, if you are talking about uh, an online shop with this immediate purchase, short buying cycle, then you want to convert them directly. If you are talking about everything else, like longer buying cycles or B2B in many cases, or even educational customers like, like universities or all sorts of, of things, associations, uh, they all want to get in touch first and convert into customers later. So get in touch, give us your contact data. How can we support that with Mordic? Now, traditional inbound marketing goes like this. We create a great landing page, the page that works really well. And elements of that landing page are some sort of attractive offering. Uh, typically, we talk about assets, like here's an ebook, here's a video that you want to watch. There are other better ideas, like here's a demo version of the product that we offer. Here's uh, access to some sort of, of valuable intelligence or application. Um, so long story short, it has to be some, some real value. Uh, and it, it has to be something as so valuable that the, the visitor is, is now willing to give us uh, their contact. So that's lead generation. Um, in e-commerce, once again, you may want to sell directly uh, or create a lead too. Now, in order to do that, uh, to, to allow that person to give us their lead or their, their contact data, of course, you need a form. All that is part of, of Mautic. You can create a landing page. You can uh, have assets that you uh, deposit and then track. Uh, and you can, of course, have forms to work with. Uh, but but that's not really a big deal. It, it, you don't win much of out of using Mordic at this point. Um, it does a little bit more, like A/B testing of landing pages in this case. Um, that's helpful, and uh, and A/B testing is part of the the larger term of conversion rate optimization (CRO). So you may want to look into that if you do inbound marketing. So that's, that's a regular tool set that we have. And there's another thing that we have in Mautic that's focus item. Um, focus item is some sort of banner that uh, is on top of your website or over, overlays your website in really different flavors and, and really, really powerful. Um, but the, the, the idea is always to attract the focus of the visitor and send them somewhere specifically. So what it does, it helps us bring the customer to the desired conversion page, maybe even to bring him or her back to that page if they, if they went away to some different place in the website. So that's the goal. It is, again, it's, it's super powerful in Mautic. If you haven't used it, go play around with it maybe today. Um, it's, it's fun. It's very flexible. If you want to have a design like we just saw, uh, it takes a little bit of CSS. But in general, it's, it's a, to me, it's the best builder that we have in Mordic uh, because it gives you immediate results and, and huge flexibility. Um, one tip here is when you create that sort of overlay, or that sort of focus item, it's not good on, on mobile. It's uh, even um, not prohibited, but, but it's sanctioned by, by Google if you do so, that sort of overlays. So what you do is a different style called the bar style, where just a little line uh, flies in, maybe at the bottom of the mobile screen, and um, sends the message. Doesn't work as well as what we just saw, but, but that's the best you can do on mobile. So let's focus item. Now, that's not much. Um, there's a little bit that Mautic does for us here, but we can do much better. And if we go back to what is marketing automation, 
um, the idea is always to be intelligent, to be individual, to do the right things at the right time in a very personalized or targeted way and not the same thing to everybody at, the, at, at every time. So that's the, the idea and how do we apply that to our inbound marketing and to the website. Um, let's see, dynamic web content. That's one important instrument that we have in our toolbox. So if you look at this portion here, um, it's German, but uh, the big, big deal is just that you see the change. Um, this may look like this for regular customers, whereas for a specific uh, segment of customers, it might look differently. So the content of the website changes depending on the visitor. So we can adjust the content. We can, although we don't know, we don't, we don't have any, any form or any contact data from the person, we can adjust the content. We talk about the how in a second. For now, this is just the tool that we use to uh, get our message across. What other tools do we have? Oh, focus items, of course. They can be dynamic too. It can be different focus items or it could be different content of the same focus items, or it could be different places where they are used. So that's two things. It's basically the, the, the two channels that we have on the website is dynamic web content and its focus items. So uh, examples, well, what, what, what could we do with this? And this is really the, the core here of the inspiration of how powerful this can be and how, how important it is to do this. Because if you look at the funnel, you uh, attract a certain number of people to your website, you turn just a fraction of that into leads, and then you keep or go on nurturing those leads. And uh, at every point here, if you can increase by 10%, that's already a huge gain. If you can increase by 50%, that's, that's a, a big, big deal. And uh, this conversion thing is, is the thing that's very neglected in, in comparison to SEO or so. So go ahead, work on that, get creative and look at these examples. Number one, we have a car dealership and a user comes to the website for the first time and uh, comes in through a landing page, which says, uh, hey, here's a new car, get a test drive. So very typical lead creation thing. Uh, here's the form, sign up for a test drive. And of course, we are now in touch with you. We can now stay in touch and, and uh, keep selling to you. So that, that's the idea of the page, but the user doesn't do that. Um, he or she um, finds the site interesting and um, starts browsing the site. Obviously, when you are in a closed system, in a single page or a closed landing page situation, that doesn't apply. But in, in other cases, like a car dealership, um, it's, it's part of the concept that the user will leave the landing page. So well, we didn't succeed. What can we do? After a couple of minutes, we can give him a focus item and remember him, uh, him or her and say, hey, test drive this new car. And maybe we're lucky and that person is now ready to give us their contact data and go ahead. So uh, we can only do that because we know that person came in through that page specifically. Um, so that big, big, big win. We remember where the patient, uh, uh, person came from and try to send them back there because we were so close already. Similar case, the user comes to another um, lead magnet, uh, lead, lead generation page called Trade Show Voucher. Um, so looks at the page, looks at the trade show, looks at the offering, looks at the form, but decides not to submit the form um, and leaves. The next day, uh, that person comes back to the same web page maybe not through the lead magnet now, but, but uh, through mycompany.com homepage. Um, what do we do? 
we give him dynamic web content, uh, which says, get the trade show voucher now. That doesn't have to be a focus item, but right at the home page, we have a nice banner or, or maybe a text or whatever that says, get your trade show or get your voucher for this specific trade show, because we know that person is interested in the trade show. We wouldn't show that to, ev to everybody because it's not the biggest deal in the world, but for that person, it's our best chance to get the person hooked. So in this case, it's dynamic web content. Third up is um, a, an online shop for tea and coffee products. So a user comes there, anonymous visitor once again, looks around, um, serves this page, that page, and has a heavy focus on tea products. So not coffee, but tea. What do we do with that? After eight minutes, we give a focus item, order your free tea samples. Another idea for lead creation in this, uh, these low cost products, why not get the address of the person by sending a, uh, a sample uh, which is worth just a couple of dimes. Um, but um, the, the contact, the, the lifetime value of the customer is quite valuable. So we basically buy our contact data by, friend, by sending free samples. So, and that, that offering is only offered to the person because we know they have a con uh, an interest into tea products. Now, the user doesn't do that. Returns next day, what do we do? Once again, we act on the knowledge about uh, his preferences. So on the homepage, we now are not generically offer everything. We now offer specifically tea products, like uh, here are our latest tea recommendations or specials or whatever. We might as well come back with, with a free samples thing, but um, there's different ideas, of course, of what you want to communicate. In both cases, we act based on the knowledge that the person is interested in tea, and um, we use both things in our tool set, we use focus items and dynamic web content. Next up is number four. It's a really simple one. Some user comes back to a e-commerce site for the third time, but has never placed an order. What could we do with that person? Hmm. How about we give him a voucher? And tell him, hey, here's 10% off, valid only today. Once again, very, very uh, specific for that person. We, we know uh, she's really engaged. Back for the third time, there must be some, uh, something. We just need to push the, the client over the line and she's going to be a customer. So um, the idea here is give, uh, give a voucher and we do that through a focus item. Next up. A user comes to our photo products uh, e-commerce site using an iPhone. Mm, why not give him a focus item to say and say, hey, today's special 25% off iPhone covers. So we know the device the user is on and we try to set the hook directly for that device. Okay, so after all, to, um, we have a couple of examples and they are all were slightly different, even if it might seem like we have certain similarities, which we do, but the, the, the things behind it are all different. So let's, let's take a look. We have a behavior that we act on, like the areas of interest. That's something we know, although the user is anonymous, we, we know where they came in, we know what pages they visited, so we act upon that, that area of interest. And once again, doesn't work for a single pager. Uh, we can also act based on engagement, like it uh, comes back for the third time, has nothing to do with area of interest, interest has also nothing to do with contact data, it is just obviously 
a highly interested user. Uh, other things would be the referrer. We know where the pay, where person comes from. And then there's one more, um, or oh, one, one different um, sort of uh, tracking or a targeting criteria, and that's demographics. We don't know much here. We don't know the age. We don't know the gender of the, the person. Um, but we do know like, some technical things like the device type, the browser language, the geolocation. Uh, those may also give us some insights uh, and may, may be helpful about uh, for targeting the user. So how do we do that? Here are the secrets. And we start with engagement because that is really the most simple one. Um, obviously, we have, we have a powerful tool for that in Mordic, the points, the scoring system, which allow you to very flexibly uh, uh, define what signs or what signals we look at and how we interpret them and give points accordingly. And in, in normal scenarios, those points are used to push users of a barrier over borders like uh, we now give it to the CRM system or we send an email or something. In this case, we send a focus item, as you remember. There are other ways to indicate uh, engagement, but I think points are, is so straightforward that it's most commonly used. Next up, uh, the abandoned form. And um, that is done a little bit differently. Typically, we do that by Send, setting a tag on the website or on the web page. So a user visits a page like, like a checkout form or, or a sign up form for a test drive or whatever it is. So we can set a tag there. We don't do that on the Mordic site. We don't use a campaign or something to, to set a tag. We do that directly from within the web page by, um, by a technical tweak that Mordic uh, allows is basically um, um, calling for a, for a certain pixel. Once uh, when, when that is um, part of the, the, the page, then a tag is set. It can, can the pixel get, uh, says the tag as a parameter. And um, then the, the contact on the other side has that tag applied. You can also uh, abstract that from from the HTML. There are CMS plugins which allow to define that tag directly. So I uh, visit the sign up page and uh, immediately have the tag uh, attached to my contact data in Mordic. Uh, there are of course situations where multiple pages, multiple sign-up pages or pages of interest are visited. And you may want to apply some logic to, for instance, indicate which was the first one visited, which was the last one visited, whatever the specific logic is here. In case of the test drive example, it might be a good idea to say, okay, the last test drive that the user looked at is the one that he or she is most probably interested in, or maybe it's the first one. So the logic depends on the particular case. Now, next example, first lead page scene. You remember the very, very first one where a user came in through a ad campaign or something, but, but through a, a certain landing page, and we want to act on that. So. Um, the way to do that is a little bit more complex. Uh, one solution would be to have a segment which uh, catches all those users and then create a campaign based on that segment, uh, which basically sits there and waits for all lead generation pages that we have. And when the first one is uh, reached, then the campaign can, can go ahead and do something like set a contact field, uh, leave the campaign, leave the segment, whatever the specific logic is here, but that's the most simple way these days to catch the first lead page scene. So, and we're 
running towards the end of our magic here area of interest. That's a funny one because it's it's uh, a tricky problem to identify what areas are of the page are most interesting to the user. You can do that th through manual campaign logic based on pages or the, the page visit visited action or on, on tags that are set and, and uh, checked in conditions. But that's mm, cumbersome to say the least. And there's, there's a little trick that you can do and that applies to our tea and coffee example. And it applies to everything else that divides into only two areas. It doesn't work for three or more areas, but it works magic for two areas. And we call it the funny scoring trick. Um, what you do here is you work with points, but you give positive and negative points in this case. So whenever I visit uh, a T item, I get some points, but whenever I visit a coffee item, then I get negative points. As a result, when I keep visiting coffee items, my total score goes negative and then far negative even. And when I am more on the T side, then I will have a positive score. And then it's easy. I do the targeting ba uh, based on uh, my total score when it's uh, significantly negative. I'm a, tea, I'm a coffee guy. Uh, significantly, significantly positive. I'm a tea guy. And if it's uh, just around zero, then either I'm not interested or uh, we don't know. I don't. I'm interested in both. Of course, <laughs> that's an app use of the points system. Scoring can no longer be used for the regular things, which are also really valuable. So um, if you can live without the regular scoring, this thing is a really cool trick. If you do want to use the normal scoring too, then it's a trade-off. Yeah. Good. Last up is a demographic criteria. That's once again, really simple. You can do segment filters on, on certain things like the device model. You can say Apple devices, you can say iPhones specifically. You can also say mobile phones if you we, we want to be even more generic. And you can act on the country, which may or may not be derived from the IP address and uh, some other things, including the referrer. So you can um, create segments based on the referrer and um, act on, on based on those. That's only for specific cases, but you could, for instance, say, okay, if this one comes from an affiliate site or from, from certain other things, I want to act uh, accordingly. Ooh, so um, that was rather fast. <laughs> I, uh, and I hope the, the creative ideas are at the core of it all, but, but the, the tool set to implement the, the creative ideas are just as important, I believe. There's a little bit of other uh, things that I would like to talk about. Um, first of all, if you want to act on the spot, then you may need to increase the frequency of your cron jobs. So for all those who are not familiar with the concept, uh, some checks are done only on a regular basis by, by Mordic. And um, that's uh, scheduled by a thing called cron. And uh, if you only check every 15 minutes, then you will not be able to react uh, before that. Um, time has been reached. Um, you will still be able to react nicely once that person comes back a second time. But if you want to act while the person is still on the website, you may need uh, higher cron frequencies. And yeah, just to mention it, you can do very smart things with anonymous visitors as just discussed you have even more potential once you know the contact. So be creative there too. And don't just do the regular follow-up email, but, but be much more creative based on what the person does, what the, he or she is interested in, etc. And then um, for dynamic web content, um, we have a, a JavaScript-based solution with Mautic. 
which inserts or injects the dynamic content in your actual website at the desired place. That's a powerful th thing, but um, it cannot do everything. If you want to go beyond that, you need a deeper integration with the content management system. As you know, I'm more familiar with Typo 3, and there we do have a really powerful integration. We can change everything based on the segment of the visiting group. So you could not only say, okay, here's an image, here's a video that we, in, uh, that we display for that target group. Um, we could also say, okay, we have a completely different color set or template or whatever, um, or even page tree based on the persona, as we call it, which is again based on the segments in Mautic. Um, and there's certainly more, and uh, I, I do have a lot of ideas, like um, we should persist directly which page, page the user origi originally, vi originally visited in Mautic, or we should uh, have additional mechanisms uh, to prevent the cron wait time. There are ideas for all that, and, and like always, there's a ton of ideas we need to prioritize. But I'm sure there are more ideas out there. So if you have any ideas or maybe uh, specific projects on your mind, uh, I'd be happy to learn about those. So tell me directly. Or of course, like always, do use the uh, Mortic for forum. There's a feature request and ideas or something like that uh, category. And uh, that's a perfect place to look up existing ideas, to comment on those, but also to place your own ideas or maybe uh, requests. So um, we are yeah, reaching the 30 minutes now, uh, but we have time left for a little bit of Q&A. So this would be the point for questions. So Toby, would you like to uh, facilitate that. Sorry, I, I, are you talking to me? I I'm sorry, I didn't get what you're trying to say. Okay. Um, would you would you like to facilitate to moderate the questions? Okay, great. Yeah, sure. I would like to do that. All right. So, if you have any questions, please can you signify? Um, just ask to the unmute. I will mute you so that you can just ask the question. Um, but if you are fine to post it in the chat, please do so too. Anybody got question? Please um, ask for us to be unmuted. I will unmute you so that you can ask a question. What I would like to know of, um, is among the um, participants today, uh, how many of you have been working with dynamic web content b uh, before at all? played around with it or using it in actual websites. Uh, if if you did, uh, could you please raise hand? I, I'd be super interested in, le in learning that. Um, okay. Or maybe we should say... Uh, so Ruth, Ruth, Ruth wants to talk. I want access to unmute Ruth. You can just. I was just saying I have used dynamic web content before. Hmm. Okay. Happy to hear that, Ruth. <laughs> okay. Um, I, I know that, that dynamic web content has been around for a while. I think it was introduced with 250 now. Um, and it's quite powerful, but it, it seems to be not really widespread. It's partly because it's it's tricky to handle and partly because people don't even know about it. And I, I really hope to inspire uh, more people to, to use it and to leverage all the potentials that we have. Because once again, anonymous, anonymous visitors are our most valuable asset in, oh, no, no, well, from, from my perspective, anyway, in, in the funnel. The, those are the people that we managed to attract to the website, which, which was the toughest part. Now we need to do something with them. 
Okay, so any other other questions out there? Okay, um, nobody is asking questions or um, is raising up the answer to ask questions. So maybe, um, maybe by the time we are back from the um, breakout rooms, maybe there will be um, there will be some questions before then. So you can just quickly go out, go for a breakout room for ten minutes, and then maybe during the discussion, some questions might spring up, and then we might. I want to ask them after that. So I'm adding everybody to different rooms now. So we be doing this for the next 10 minutes. Okay, and, and while we go there, I'm, I'm just playing my contact data here. Okay, um, say something. Sorry. Okay. Yeah, while, while, while we're going to the breakout room, um, the contact data is here on the screen. I am available on all, on all the regular channels, but preferred channel is LinkedIn. And um, okay. once again, the, the Mordicast can be found on Mordicast.com. Yeah, thanks everybody for listening and talk to you soon. Thanks, Toby. Yeah, so technically, yeah, but it depends whether you need that information within your website or whether you want to be able to go, if you're okay with the third party to get that. You could pull the data in with the API and then display it within your web application if you wanted to. So you could just pull the data and show the charts using a, a chart library or something. Um, or you could just go to Mortic and look at it there. And the nice thing with dashboards is you can export them and import them. So you could create a dashboard for a client and then you could just roll that for every other client. You don't have to rebuild it every time. You just upload the JSON file and the, and the dashboard will be available to select. But in terms of the dynamic web content, is it on a website? based on the behavior so uh, you can also do dynamic content in email so like if they have the job title of ceo send this version of the email and if they have the job title of marketing assistant send this version because you can to types of people so the dynamic part of it is where it changes on, on the website and the email based on what you know about the lead Thank you very much. Michael, any other question from you before we close it uh, for today? I'm okay. No one for now. Okay, great, great, great. So, um, favor over to you. Human is actually very completed and we are closing. So, can kindly share this event. The video will be uploaded on YouTube and you can watch previous meetup there. Also, uh, you can join the Lagos community uh, for our monthly meetup and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Uh, for feedbacks, you can contact Toby Victor, I, I don't think Victor was in this meeting today, was he? And me. So our next meeting will be on August 29th, happening um, by 11. And with that, we say very big thank you to the people who have participated in today's uh, meetup. Toby, Woods, Michael, AK, and a lot of people who already left. Um, had a new year, so a very big thank you to them. So I guess this just we draw the cutting points, and uh, oh, someone already joined now, but it's already too late. We are closing. So we say big thank you to everyone. Um, bye bye.